perception, of course, the only value that I have is in delivering the post, the mail, without changing. But that is a very special job to present Lord Krishna's instructions and knowledge as it is without changing. You don't think so much about the mailman. He just brings the mail. But the fact is the mailman has to just deliver without changing anything. He can't open the envelopes and cross something out and change it. You may say, what's the big deal about speaking the message of Lord Krishna without changing it? But you must take into account there's such a thing as the illusory energy. <laughs> as Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, Mayadhyakshena prakriti suyate satcharatra this whole material world is going on under the direction of Krishna's intelligence. And part of living in the material world means daiviesha gunamai mamamaya dharatya. There is such a thing as the illusory energy, which impedes your attempt to see everything clearly. Just like when there's fog. In this part of LA, sometimes there's fog. It's a driving hazard. Mm. So, the material world is a permanently fogged out place. But within that fog, everyone pretends that they can see. Sometimes they get a little glimmer of light. But generally they're just totally confused, wandering in confusion. Because of that illusory energy, there's difficulty in seeing your way to the ultimate goal of life. Part of that difficulty is that because persons have material motivations, they want to change things. Life in this world means you're bombarded by conditions. Material motivations. And so, you don't want to hear directly from Krishna. You don't want to hear straight from Krishna. You want to make your own interpretation so that you can justify material attachment. Justify material conditioning. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna speaks very clearly. But to appreciate that clarity and simplicity one needs a lifestyle that is very clear. So now, the problem enters. How do you have a clear lifestyle? How do you have a lifestyle of clarity? When you're living in a world of complete uh, confusion, the truth is always obscure, it's always hidden, get distortions, you never get the full picture, and then we look at life itself, the way it's lived. You see, even in one's personal life, one can see inauthenticity. That's a, a guilt that gnaws away at your heart. I'm not being authentic. I'm being a bit of a phony. I'm not acting according to my highest aspirations. You resign yourself. Well, how can you expect me to act according to my highest aspirations when no one else does? <laughs> Who am I to try to be so different? Who am I to try to be a saint? Who am I to try and be a yogi? Just look what's happening all around me. If I try to go in the opposite direction, I'll stand, I'll stand out like a sore thumb. So isn't it better just to do as everyone else is doing and just be a little spiritually minded? You may have noted that that attempt 
in that way, doesn't bring the clarity and authenticity in your life that you long for. In order to see clearly, we must live clearly. And where do you get the information? How to live clearly? Krishna himself explains it in Bhagavad Gita. How to enter the bhakti laboratory. Apply your instruments and get the results. As we often explain, not religious belief, but spiritual experience. That's why this is the king of knowledge, the, king, the best education. How to be authentic, how to live a lifestyle of clarity, how not to be bewildered by your mind and senses. That is the real career. Amongst you, we have good students, good graduates, and naturally you want to work so that you can have a comfortable existence in this world. That's all right. But the real career is how to live a life of authenticity and clarity. So that indeed you can understand what is the ultimate goal of life. Let's speak positively. Although it seems so difficult to live a life based on comprehensive spiritual knowledge, as contrasted with living a life based on a few religious platitudes. To live a life based on comprehensive spiritual knowledge, in-depth spiritual knowledge, as Krishna gives in Bhagavad Gita, as is there in Srimad Bhagavatam, it, it, it looks impossible. You observe yourself, a conditioned living entity, subject to lust, anger, greed, Madness, envy, and illusion. <laughs> These six disruptors of the spiritual endeavor. You look at your life and you not only observe these disruptors, but you also deserve the deep material attachments to this body, to wanting to enjoy this temporary material world. wanting to get pleasure from matter and material arrangements. You see all this in yourself and you wonder how you could ever be up to the standard of authenticity and clarity that Krishna presents in Bhagavad Gita. You might even feel discouraged sometimes newcomers to Krishna consciousness. They say, Extraordinary knowledge, beautiful people, and of course the prasad is out of this world. But although it's so beautiful, how can I hold on to that beauty amidst the ravages of material existence? Wherever you walk, wherever you go, wherever you drive, wherever you fly, <coughs> You're besieged by sensual stimulation. Not only sensual stimulation, but stimulation that takes you away from understanding the ultimate questions. There's no value attached to your understanding or your attempt to understand the ultimate questions. 